restrictions on their travel um, uh, and reporting that they've found Omicron uh, COVID, uh, you know, among their population, Scotland and Portland and excuse me, and Portugal, not Portland, Portugal. Uh, we have cases in North America. They're in Quebec, Canada. I, I'm guessing that in the United States, it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's probably already here. We're just not, I mean, you've got to, you can't just test for it with a test kit. You've got to actually do the, the analysis of the, of, the, uh, of the virus itself or the DNA of the spike or wh however they do it. It's more complicated. Uh, Japan has joined Israel and Morocco in banning all foreign visitors. Uh, the New York Times reporting, uh, Joe Biden this morning went on television, this is about 45 minutes ago, and maybe an hour ago, and said, um, you know, this is a cause for concern, but not a cause for panic. It's clearly, though, uh, well, I shouldn't even say anything is clearly, because we really don't know, but it appears, given how this is now popping up all over the world, this is moving the way the Delta variant did. Remember, there was the original COVID, and then there was the Alpha variant. Uh, out of the UK, and that kind of popped up here and there, and then the Delta variant came along, and now the Delta variant is like 99% of all infections in the world, pretty much, and uh, or certainly in, in the Western world. And now we're seeing this Omicron variant just popping up all over the place, which would indicate probably it's more contagious. Whether it's more deadly, less deadly, nobody knows. Um, the most despicable thing of all of this is over on Fox so-called news, they're, they're, they had uh, the, the Fox and Friends people going, oh yeah, well, you know, it's a month before an election, so there's a new variant. All uh, right, yeah, let's be cynical about it. Which, which brings my question for this hour, uh, along, you know, along with the uh, COVID transplants question, which I mentioned in the last hour and, and didn't get any calls on, um, so I'll just leave it there. But um, have Republicans lost their moral compass altogether? I mean, is this just, is, is the embrace of greed back in the 1980s that, you know, the, 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 the Reagan administration open embrace of greed? You'll recall when Jimmy Carter had his uh, uh, inaugural ball, um, you know, they, they opened it up to average people. When Reagan did it, you had to spend huge, you had to give huge amounts of money to the Republican Party. And, you know, you had to show up in a, in a tux and all this kind of stuff. Reagan took a limousine from Capitol to the White House. Jimmy Carter walked. I mean, you know, there, there was this huge transition in January of 1981 when, when Jimmy Carter left office and Ronald Reagan came in, in America. Not just a political transition, but a cultural transition. And we are now 40 years out from that, looking back on it, going, okay, how'd this work out? And, and it's, by the way, it's not just greed. I had a caller earlier, I believe it was uh, Tyrone in New York, who was saying, you know, uh, racism in the United States, white supremacy is also an aspect of greed. It's like, you know, white people saying, you know, we've got ours, screw everybody else and literally trying to screw everybody else, trying to hurt other people, trying to prevent other people from, from you know, having a share of the pie that is, that is or should be the American dream. And this absolutely shocking poll that was uh, put together by the British magazine, The Economist, and uh, the polling agency, YouGov, this is a serious, solid, this isn't one of those polls that just pops up on Fox News from some group you never heard of. I mean, this is a serious poll. Asked the question, do you believe Gregory Mike McMichael, Travis McMichael, and William Bryan should be found guilty for the murder of Ahmed Arbery? Now, at this, at, and this, this poll was done November 20th through the 23rd. This poll was done last week. It, it, it finished the day before the verdict. So this was a fairly clean poll. You know, people knew what they knew. They, you know, the, the video was all over the place. Only 32% of people who said that they had voted for Donald Trump said that these three men should be convicted of murdering Mr. Aubrey. Only, thir only fewer than a third of Trump voters 82% of Biden voters said, yeah, throw their asses in jail. Only 
of Biden voters said no, they should not be found guilty. The remaining 16% were not sure. But among Trump voters, it was only 32% who said yes. What does this say about the Republican Party? There was a, a, another remark. Fareed Zakaria did two absolutely remarkable specials yesterday on CNN. And if you haven't had an opportunity to see them, I encourage you to track them down and watch them. Whether it's, uh, I, I'm not sure if they're available online at CNN's, CNN's website or if you're going to have to wait for the next time they play. But um, the, the morning one was basically how, how the Republican Party went nuts. And then the evening program was about the rise of, of, uh, of China. And they are both just like, you know, must watch. But the how the Republican Party went nuts part, the rise of Ronald Reagan and Newt Gingrich, the role that Newt Gingrich played in all this, of corrupting our politics. What has happened to the Republican Party? Have they completely lost their moral compass? I'm, I'm thinking so. Here, Marjorie Taylor Greene just tweeted out, quote, the most important thing Republicans can do is to stop the funding of vaccine mandates. Republicans voting for funding of OSHA. This, now, these, these mandates, what she's talking about is the requirement that Joe Biden uh, executed via ex executive order that has now been stopped, not killed, but stayed. It's on hold from a Republican judge. But what Biden requ request, or maybe it wasn't an executive order, maybe it was a, a statement from, actually I think it was OSHA itself, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which has the authority to regulate the workplace, said if your company has over a certain number of employees, my recollection is it was 100 employees, but I could be wrong on that, but if your company, maybe it was 1,000, but if your company has over a certain number of employees, you must require all of them to be vaccinated or not come to work. And so Marjorie Taylor Greene goes, goes on to say, Republicans voting for funding of OSHA will be voting to fund communist tactics used against the American people. Vaccine mandates are unconstitutional, no matter your stance on vaccines, she added. This is her rant. Communism. You know, I mentioned this last week, and in fact, I should probably write an op-ed about it because I think that this is such an important point. When people like Green and other right-wingers are talking about communism, they're not talking about the fact that in communist countries, everybody has health care. You know, Cuba is producing, they are, they are now producing four different vaccines that have been developed by scientists working for their government. No profit motive whatsoever. They're selling them to countries all over the world. And they've got one of the highest vaccination rates in, in, outside of the developed world on Earth. That's not the kind of communism we're talking about when Marjorie Taylor Greene is talking about communism. She's talking about the, the aspect of communism that caused the government in Cuba to threaten to arrest people who demonstrated against the, the government. It's the totalitarian aspect that you see in so many communist countries. You're seeing it in China now as well. You're seeing it also, and, and arguably even in greater form and force, in some non-communist countries. I mean, look at what Modi is doing in India or Duterte in the Philippines, or Bolsonaro in Brazil. But nonetheless, what she's actually saying is, look out, this is totalitarian behavior. Which is very bizarre for a Republican to say when the Republicans are openly advocating totalitarianism. They are openly, they're, they're saying, we don't believe in elections. We don't want people to vote. We are taking on to ourselves in state houses the power to change elections to make it harder for people to vote, to decide that some voters, just their votes won't even count, to purge people from the voting list based on their color or their zip code. And yet they're, they're, they're saying, oh, and, and by the way, let's not save the lives of Americans by mandating vaccines. This is sick and twisted stuff. The other thing is Nancy Mace. Uh, I, I saw this on CNN and I thought, wow, a rational Republican. On Sunday, uh, Nancy Mace was on both Fox and CNN. She's a Republican from South Carolina, member of the House of Representatives. And on CNN, she said, COVID is serious business. I'm a long hauler. This is a disease and illness we should take seriously. And I want to encourage the American people to talk to their doctors and talk about getting vaccinated. I was recently diagnosed, Caitlin, with asthma and I had COVID 19 a year and a half ago. I'm still feeling the repercussions a year and a half later. Sounds like she's like pro vaccine, right? She went on Fox and said, 
One of the things that the CDC has not done and no policy at the federal level has done or taken into account is what natural immunity does. And that may be what we're seeing in Florida today. In some studies that I've read, natural immunity gives you 27 times more protection against future COVID than a vaccination, which by the way is not true. It's not only not true, but having had COVID does not prevent you from getting it again. If you had the original COVID, if you had alpha or beta COVID, you can still get Delta COVID. If you've had Delta COVID, you can get Delta COVID again. The vaccine provides much better protection, but here's this Republican lawmaker. Obviously, you know, where was she telling the truth? On Fox or on CNN? I don't know. But obviously very comfortable with going on national television and lying through her teeth. This is today's Republican party. And I guess the question out of that, uh, beyond have Republicans lost their moral compass, because that's almost a rhetorical question, it's so self-evident, is how do we handle this? How do we deal with this? How do we deal with media like Fox News and Right Wing Hate Radio that openly promotes lies and falsehoods that have killed hundreds of thousands of Americans unnecessarily?